The first test that we'll use for today's exercise in SPSS is the one samples t-test. For this particular test what we need to do is first select the variable view at the bottom left hand corner of our screen. Once we select this view we're given an opportunity to name the variable that we want to assess. In this first box what we'll type is attitude and we'll put underscore math. So for this particular example we're interested in seeing whether or not there's a difference between a sample mean and a population mean. And the means that we're going to address today are the mean attitude scores toward math. Once we input the name of our variable, we need to ensure that type is selected directly next to it. And then all the way towards the right hand side of the screen, we need to ensure that our measure is listed as scale. And we also need to ensure that our role is designated as input. Once we've ensured that our first variable is labeled and listed correctly, we can then select the data view again at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Once we select this view, we're now given an opportunity to input the data that we have on our particular topic. So for this particular example, we are looking at a sample mean as it relates to the attitude towards math. And we've asked individuals to rank their attitude towards math on a scale from 0 to 10. So as we look at this particular screen, we could see that our first respondent has listed their attitude as a 2. Our second respondent has listed their attitude as a 10. Our third respondent has listed their attitude as a 6. And that list continues until our 20th respondent, who has again listed their attitude as 1. What we can do now to run this particular test is select at the very top of the screen the button that says Analyze. Once we select this Analyze button, we need to then select the link that says Compare Means. Once we select the Compare Means tab, we then need to scroll over to where it says One Sample T-Test. Once we select the one sample t-test, our test variable usually appears here in the very first box. What we'll need to do is select the arrow in the middle to bring it under where it says test variable. Now just below that you'll see a box that's listed as test value. In this box is where we're going to put the mean for the population we're wanting to compare our sample to. So let's say for this particular example, the mean attitude towards math for a given population is 4. We're wanting to compare that value of 4 to the mean of the data that we've just input into SPSS. Once we've selected all of our stats and once we've selected our test variable, we can then select the OK button. Once the OK button has been selected, we'll notice that we have some one sample statistics. The N is essentially just going to let us know how many individuals or how many data sets that we have. And directly next to that, we have our mean, which is 3.7. And then we have a standard deviation of 2.55. Now, just below that, we have our one sample t-test. And if you'll notice, there are a couple of things that you're probably familiar with offhand. The first is the letter T. That represents our test statistic, which in this particular case is negative 0.525. And we also have our degrees of freedom, which is 19. Now, in the third box, you'll see what's listed as SIG and in parentheses, two-tailed. This represents the significance value for a two-tailed test when we analyze a one sample's mean. Now, for this particular value, this essentially represents our seven-step hypothesis testing that we do by hand. This one value lets us know whether or not we need to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. 
if you'll notice that this value is 0 0.606. This value is greater than our alpha level of 0 0.05. So if we have our sig two tilt value being greater than our alpha level of 0 0.05, we need to fail to reject the null hypothesis. If our sig two tilt value is less than 0.05, we then need to reject the null hypothesis.